here we are. Lovely sunny day. It's Saturday. The sun is out, unfortunately. But we've had like four days of heavy rain. So believe it or not, the River Earn is actually a river that's moving. I've just put a few feeders in with two fish. So let's see what today brings, eh? Roll that intro. So, absolutely beautiful day. The uh, young fella behind or beside me here has just managed to catch quite a nice bream, so at least the fucking bream are in the river. That's a good sign. Now I just need them to start eating my bit. The river there always fishes better when it's coloured and when it's moving. Well it isn't really coloured, but it's moving, so we're 50-50 there. Not moving that fast. I've got a 40 gram feeder. It's holding the bottom. I've got a three foot hook length to a size 10 Guru feeder special and as many maggots as I can physically put on the hook. I think there was like six of them. And I missed that bite. Not fishing terribly far out. The marker is a boat with a blue tarp, I think, whatever the fuck it is. That's just in front of me, so I'm just kind of flicking it in front of me. Yeah, I had a bait there, I had a fish there. I'm feeding one kilo of black crumb one kilo of gross census gross gardens or gross noir gar big black roach basically fucking French people but it isn't that bad it's a nice day unfortunately it's been a bit of a bit of a devastating week Her Majesty the Queen had passed away. Now I understand that there will be people who dislike the monarchy. That's their right, that's your right. I understand that we live in a society, or we used to live in a society where freedom of speech was actually a thing. So that your freedom to say what you want and you feel is an important thing that should be taken uh, very seriously. So I, I respect your right to say what you think, even if I find the words that's pouring out of your uh, your mouth disgusting and abhorrent. The one thing that this sort of occasion will bring out is a lot of low, low class losers who will live their entire lives and they will be remembered by fucking nobody. As you can probably tell, I kind of like the Queen. I kind of like the idea of a constitutional monarch where we have our politicians that we elect and they make the decisions and the Queen's a figurehead, a head of state, or the King will be a figurehead, head of state. And uh, it gives our nation a bit of gravitas, a bit of weight. And if anything, the Queen was a 97 year old woman who worked her entire life. Her mother, a grandmother and a great grandmother. So perhaps if you can't have a bit of dignity and respect for her position in society, then perhaps you could have uh, a bit of t respect for her as a mother or a grandmother. Because nobody out there would like to lose their mother or grandmother and anyone that has understands the pain that causes. I say this much, she was the best boss 
a bunch of uh, degenerate piss heads could ever have in my time in the armed forces. She was a cracking boss to have. She has left some massive shoes to fill for uh, King Charles. So, the Queen is dead, long live the King. Just a little bite there. Clearly that fish is a patriotic one that wanted to be caught. Apart from obviously the, 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 the news that's overtaken pretty much everything around the world. It hasn't been a, well it wasn't a terribly bad week until the end of it there. My daughter has discovered that she likes to eat fucking soda cream. I come home from work and she had the uh, full tub of soda cream opened and half of it ate. So I'm not sure why children eat soda cream. I'll show you a picture of that now. Yeah, I have, I'm experimenting with some of my bait today. I've got some casters that I've soaked in uh, cell, mainline cell goo. So I've been feeding them and I've got some maggots that have been in brassum powder and just normal, I've got some normal maggots. So I've been feeding the, just to try and You know, maybe put something different on the base of the floor on the river so that the fish will be there going all oh, right okay i smell something nice i mean the cell basically is condensed as coconut that's all cell is the ground bait is chocolatey so i mix some vanilla in with it so it's quite sweet and the fucking wasps love it I've got some brassum powder over, over a pint of maggots and I've got normal maggots then I've got corn and hemp, worm uh, I've also picked up a, a box of that which looks like it's uh, sugar and particles so I'm going to try that My little bit tray is getting quite crowded. Also using a new net head today. I got a, a new fish scooper 18 inch landing net head. I have the, the 20 inch or 24 inch, I can't quite remember as well. So I've got a small and a big one. That was a drop back bite and I don't think I missed, I think I missed it. Yeah, I missed it. No, it's still on. Whatever, it's very small though, but it's on.
been asked to show you this. So here we go. Hook. Take the fat end of the maggot. If you look at the fat end of the maggot, there's two little black dots. Straight between those. Thread your maggot on the hook so that it covers the, the shank of the hook. And there you go. That's my bait. I did get asked, you know, how am I putting the bait on the hook and blah blah blah, am I just nicking it on? So I thought I'd just bloody show you, it's easier. I'll just show you guys, it's easy. This is the problem with fishing somewhere where there is boats all the time. Yes, yes, fuck off. You have to time your cast so you don't get snagged or hit the boat. Although sometimes if you hit the boat it doesn't do them a bit of harm. It kind of encourages them to fuck off. That's fish number five. Mm. I'll just keep the bait going in and then we will see what we end up with. I'm actually going to have a cigar. Nothing special, just shit Hamlet. Cigars. But tonight when I go home I'm going to open up a good bottle of whiskey. I have a bottle of McKellen. Uh, well, it was 20 years old when I bought it five years ago. No, 2012 I bought it. So it was 20 years old in 2012, so it's 30 years old now. So I'm going to open that and drink that tonight and smoke Cuban cigars. And raise a toast, I guess. A few moments later. The bream have turned up. Oh. Now all we need is about another 20 or so more of them and it'll be a good day. <laughs> Two hours later. Seems to have quietened down a bit. We're in the middle of the day so sun's right overhead. Boat traffic hasn't been too bad. We'll begin to reach a point where there's uh, no more boats on the lock. They start to they start to draw down the levels of the lock at the minute. in preparation for storms and flooding. So the river will have a bit of a flow because they'll be letting the water out of the lower end. They do that every year. more observant. Among you might notice I am wearing a brand new hat. I think it's an addiction at this point. I can't help myself. I 
quite like the, uh, the material they were made out of. So there's like a really loud, garish blue one. And there's a more subtle green and brown one, the one I'm wearing now. Of course they're they're but mere appetizers for the winter when the uh, the woolly hat comes on. Every year I get some abuse about that fucking hat. I've introduced a little bit of chopped worm now to see if I can speed anything up. I've had one perch, the rest have been roach and uh, bream. Well, skimmers, basically. I don't even know what time it is. I think it's about two o'clock. Yeah, it's ten past two. Ten past two, so I'll fish to about five, maybe half five. Maybe fish to six o'clock and take a slow drive home. Tomorrow is gonna be throwing down rain and thunder and lightning. So as much as I like getting out and fishing and bringing you lot along. I'm not going to start fishing in thunder and lightning. Yes, it might make a viral video getting zapped by a lightning bolt, but I'd rather not. Last week I had a bit of a tantrum, a bit of a rant in the van, and I mentioned the price of oil, heating oil. Yeah. Heating oil has uh, jumped up again. Middle of September, no, middle of August, it was 745 pounds for 900 litres. Now it is 945 pounds for 900 litres. This is all happening despite the fall in uh, Brent crude per barrel, the prices fell. And this is where they'll argue, oh well, we have to sell the stuff that we bought and we paid for it at that price. And you ever feel like you're having your pants pulled down? It's the same fact for a, a lady that lives not far from her house. She has a coal fire. And she would buy coal, like by the ton. She phoned up in the morning, like I can't remember what day it was, and said, uh, I need a ton of coal, whatever coal they get. And the man goes, yeah, yeah, we'll do it for uh, for 700. And she goes, okay. She goes, I'll just go and speak to my husband and make sure that that's okay. Half an hour later, she phones and says, yeah, yeah, deliver that ton of coal. And the guy tried to argue with her that it jumped from 700 to 745 a ton the space of about half an hour. We're all going to feel the squeeze this winter, but I don't think it's helped by people uh, gouging with the prices. And the jet ski wankers have arrived. Thankfully they're fucking off that way. Up towards Cleanish. This is a part of the river that's called the uh, Dolan's Ring. If you go that way you head towards Inniskillen. If you go that way you head towards Cleanish. Far 
far side is Balnalek Marina. It's a beautiful day, it really is. I'm going to spin you guys around so you can see. isn't a bad part of the world to be in. Oh. I'd forgot I'd bought cigars in the south. In the Republic of Ireland you're not allowed to have like even the the packaging has to have like some random horrible picture. Can't read that rating. I mean, no, no harm to like the <laughs> the guys that speak Irish, but like that there, from about there to there, that there equates to smoking kills. I suppose it'd be good if you were doing like a university thing. You had to kind of have so many words and you were struggling to fill it out you could just read it in Irish I mean that's what that's four words to replace smoking kills so you could Irish up your assessments and get your word count done and, and if anybody says anything to you just claim that they're being a racist or phobic or some other sort of buzzword I've been enjoying the uh, some of the comments from like Twitter, you know, about the Queen passing away, and it just highlights that uh, some of these people clearly have never read a book. One of them was that the uh, the Queen was the colonizer, and that's like clearly did not read too much. You know, the Queen didn't take power until after the Second World War. And after the Second World War, the UK was no longer a colonial power. They were kind of giving it back. I mean, India said, we don't want you no more. So the, Queen, so the British government went, yeah, okay, cool. Have it yourself. And the Indians that are complaining, because there are some that are on Twitter crying about it. It's like, when the British arrived in India, the days of the Raj, if you were married as a woman to a man and he died, you were executed and buried with him. The evil big bad British Empire kind of went, no, 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 son, we ain't, we ain't doing that shit no more. Knock that shit on the head. You know, it, it, it makes me kind of laugh when you see people that are crying about it and slagging the person off. It's like, we have people like Vladimir Putin who were actually fighting a fucking proxy war with. He has every reason to turn around and, and say nothing, laugh. Even Vladimir Putin sent his uh, consolidations, you know. Strange.
Trevor Sinclair, shit footballer, but uh, on Talksport he was funny at times. He was given it the whole, no black or brown person should be, uh, it's upset the Queen's gone. It's like, oh really? There's footage of the Queen going around the world in like the 50s and meeting people from different nations and dancing with them, embracing them, shaking their hands, talking to them. And it didn't matter what colour they were. She was doing that at a time, like in the 50s, where the American presidents of the day would have fucking recoiled in horror if they were asked to go and shake the hand of a black person. Then they argue that we're all fucking, all white people are devil, slave owners. Again, clearly the shows they didn't read too much. Because I think up until about 2008, every British person that's ever paid taxes was uh, paying off the debt that uh, the United Kingdom got itself into to stop the, the uh, global slave trade. We actually used the Royal fucking Navy to police the Atlantic to shut down the, uh, the slave trade. Couldn't stop the Arabic slave trade though. And it makes me wonder, are these educated talking heads, if they ever actually read a book it would probably fucking horrify them. Especially the books like what the Arabs did to all the Africans they took. You know, you can see it in today's society in America, for example. Now, America is a country that has a problem with racism. The UK doesn't have a problem with racism. If anything, we have a class-based society. We don't have a racist, racial-based society. But America would have more of an issue with racism than the UK would. Slaves in America were released to give their freedom. Lincoln freed them. And that was cool. Now if you go to America, there's a large population that are African descendant, shall we say. For every one African slave took to America, there was apparently three took to uh, the Middle East. Not too many of them in the Middle East. I wonder what happens to them when they went to the Middle East. Oh, that's right. They were castrated so they couldn't breed. Worked to death. Incidentally, apparently there's still a pretty good slave trade going out of Libya. Not too many white men loading up boats though. Ignorance is bliss for some people. It just so happens that these people are writing articles in like the Guardian newspaper. Or giving it the big flex on the BBC News. Even if you look at the British Empire and compare it to like the empires of others like the Mongolians, Genghis Khan's empire. You were basically used to fight or used to fuck, depending on your gender. Roman empire was the same. They actually had coliseums where they put people in and made them fight with lions and tigers. They had arenas and special viewing areas where they would put female slaves in with dogs and well you can guess what the dogs did and it wasn't biting the French Empire and the Northern Empire didn't build so much and I think it just kind of well, it didn't do an awful lot if I'm honest with you Belgian Empire 
Belgian Empire brought the, uh, the whole chopping off limbs to the Congo. That was their party piece to give to Africa, I guess. When the UK, when the British government left Africa, what happened? Well, Rhodesia became Zimbabwe and it ended up as a third world shithole. That Idi Amin, who's a fucking cannibal that ate people. And now you look at South Africa, that's rapidly jogging along the same way to becoming another Rhodesia. But it's cool. Blame something that happened hundreds of years ago. Fishing's a bit slow at the minute. I might actually take a bit of a walk, stretch the legs, then come back to it. One hour later. It's typical. No wind, flat calm. I'm thinking, yeah, I'll break out the whip. I see some little fish on the edge of the reeds, the edge of the weeds here. I'll see if I can snatch a few little perch or something while the feeder lines went dead. And the wind kicks up. Somebody's clearly clearly telling me to stick with the feeder line. Even if it's not produced any bites. <laughs> Later. I had a decent hybrid. I'd say about what three quarters of a pound. About hand size. Relatively thick. And as it popped up just before the net, it got smashed by the pike. So it doesn't look like it's going to do. It's kind of floating in the top of the keep net there. So they get 25 fish for the day. They've not been exactly crawling up the line. But you keep the bait going in, keep the bait going in. Just have to get past all the boat traffic, I guess. That was a bit of a bite. No, I don't know. Because there's a bit of flow going, the tip will be sitting like your tip will sit like this. And usually any bait you get will be like that there because they'll, they'll hit the bait, they'll dislodge the feeder, and you've got to drop back. And that's what you're looking for with the flow. Uh, but again, it's not going anywhere near heavy enough for us to have rods in the air or anything like that, so you can get away with. I mean, I'm only fishing with 40 grams, so it's not a big heavy feeder. So the, the heavy stuff's in the van. I haven't, I haven't even took it out of the out of the boxes this year. I'm trying to do, trying to I mean you're having to kind of carry like a load of four ounce feeders. It's It's a bit of a pain in the ass. What I tend to do when I'm going feeder fishing, I just have a normal ground bait bucket and I'll throw a handful of feeders in there. I have an old Drennan reel case, but I have like what I would class as like a session case. So all the feeders I would need for a session are in there, it just gets chucked in the bucket. It gets chucked in the bucket. That gets chucked in the bucket with it, that's just pre-tied hook lengths. It's a little box from Preston, it's actually quite good. But it is fucking typical. The weather was flat calm, no wind, nothing. I thought, I can see little perch at the side of the, like there's grass weed. And you'd throw a couple of maggots in and you'd the little perch, like they're only about that for the size. Would nip out, grab the maggots and back into the weed structure. So I was there thinking, I'd put in some uh, some bait, 
and I get the whip and I'll start to see if it catch. Just to tick it over because the feeder line seems to be it seems to be hard work, it seems to be just go dead. Like a go dead for 45 minutes and then you'll have a flurry where you get two or three bites, two or three fish, and then it goes dead again. But it's been a cracking day. It really has been a beautiful day so far. I missed that one. I took my reel apart. There was a bit of a squeak from it. So I took it to bits. I put a couple of blobs of uh, grease in it. Come on. If you were to bream you would eat that. So I just kind of greased up my reel from talking to people who have those reels. They don't last forever. At the end of the day, the drilling, the drilling match guys that I speak to were saying, you know, they were they were designed to be like a cheap and cheerful thing. And I kind of looked at them and thought, yeah, cheap. At the time, they were over a hundred quid. Cheerful, okay. At the time, they were over a hundred quid. If I had spent an extra thirty quid, I could have got a an Altegra 5500 baby pit reel that would fit this rod perfectly. I can't fault the extremity reels for pre for diet for pressing too much. You know, I have that's the first time that I've took the reel to bits and cleaned and greased and give it an oil. The, the bearings looked good, the worm shaft in the middle of it looked good, there wasn't any chunks of metal or anything in sheared. You know, it looked pretty good on the inside. The grease has uh, definitely helped it. It's something I do with all my, my fishing reels. You know, if I have time, because I, you know, I need to fucking concentrate, I need to be left alone to be able to take the thing to bits and and basically clean it, grease it, put it back together. That's hard to do with like a an 18 uh, like a oh, June, July, August, September. You know, that's like a 15 month old. It's hard to do with a child that's just about learning to walk. So this year I think I'll send my, before I do the pike fishing, I'll give the reels the, uh, the once over. But I mean, again it's a case of knowing your limits. I wouldn't be at all comfortable taking, like going actually into the guts of the big pit reels that I have. I'll be fit to take the covers off, I'll give it a clean, I'll apply the grease again. That reel there, that extremity reel is dead simple. There isn't too many working parts in it. You know, that one's okay. But a bait runner type rod or bait runner type reel with, you need to kind of either be uh, confident to do it or uh, just send it out to some. There's loads of guys on like Facebook that, that specialize in uh, servicing reels. I mean, there's a couple of guys that I'd use personally that are, one of them's, uh, he's an ex Shimano employee, he's retired, and he helps me out on the side. He purely helps me out because like I would give him like a bottle of whiskey every Christmas. He's a good guy. You know, it's like when I sent him the, uh, the Shimano 4000 feeder reel 
the one that I done the review on and got a lot of stick for. He basically came back and he said it was like a reel that was completely alien to anything he's ever really been used to from being an actual Shimano employee. Like, he was the guy that would actually go out to the factories around the world and make sure that the Shimano quality assurance guys were qualified. You know, this guy is eye for detail, is beyond crazy. So he would be the one going out to actually check the factories to make sure the factories are okay. You know. But he was saying those Shimano reels, he, he was amazed that they ever got brought to market. You know, he even replaced some of the parts in it for parts from other reels. And it worked a lot better, but eventually it went the same way. So, I know I got, I got, I got a lot of stick for that, a lot of stick for that review. You know, and at the same time it was, it was how I thought about something I'd bought and paid for. It wasn't a review of like, some sponsored company had come along and said, here, use this reel and let us know what you think. I went and physically gave over my hard-earned cash for a product that was shit. I'll be honest with you, it was shit. And it was three times it was sent, well, two times back to the shop where I bought it from to get brand new reels. On the third occasion it was sent because it was out of warranty by that point it was it was sent to my uh, my engineer friend but like he said he was amazed that it ever got made he was amazed that it ever got produced still say la vie I guess but back to this Extremity 620 reel. For the abuse I've given it, I mean, feeder fishing's hard work. You're constantly having to throw weights, you're constantly having to grind feeders back. So it's quite intensive. And that reel stood up now for a while. I've had a couple of years out of it. And that was a, like that was the first proper strip down and clean that I gave it last week. About traffic. One hour later. It's just gone half five. I'm thinking of calling it time. Been all right. The boat traffic hasn't been that bad. But it's just so slow. You get like a little burst where you catch like three little fish, and then there'll be no bites for like 40 minutes, and then there'll be another burst. Mr. Pikes took three of the fish. So, for now, my. My clicker says that I'd, oh, I have 30 fish, so we'll see what we have. Uh, but it's nice, it's peaceful, it's quiet. This is why you come fishing. So when you've had a bit of a pants week, you can get all the stress away. That's why we fish. At least that's why I fish. My wife says I'm antisocial. That could be something. There's times where I don't want to be near people. So yeah, antisocial could be it. But I think the 
this is the This is it, this is the last cast of the day. Tail feeder. Like those feeders a lot. You can really pack the uh, particles into them. And that hook length is uh, shredded. I'll be able to use the hook again because I only tied that hook on two fish ago. So, hook it in there. But you're not going to be able to see that. That's shredded. Yeah, if you run your finger along it, it's 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 nice and it's fine and silky, and then sandpaper, 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 sandpaper. So yeah, it's important to put. Make sure that you make sure that you get your all your lines and all your rubbish is home with you. And I had a... When I was winding in, I must have had an overlap. So that's what that long cast was. That was just to make sure that the bread goes onto the reel properly. I'm itching to get out pike fishing again. I really am. So I'm going to start putting this stuff away. Get the van loaded. Yeah, there's those feeders. In comparison, that's a 40 gram one, but they hold a, you can pack a lot of particles into them. Normally if I was feeding live maggots, I would tape a feeder, so that you're plugging it with both ends of ground bit, so the maggots are kept inside it. But I actually got away with scooping the maggots, plugging the end of it, and casting them with it, because the holes are small enough that it takes them a little bit of time to escape from. So, let me get this shit away, I'll show you what's in the net, and then we'll call it time to go home. A few moments later. Let's see what we got. Wasn't a bad, a bad day. It's pretty good. Right, let's take a picture. Let's just take a picture. Not going to weigh it. There wasn't an awful lot to weigh, but I will take a picture.
So that's today. <sighs> I need a pint.